Wait. Yep. Do I need to start it? Oh. I started it. Oh. I thought it, it usually says this is being recorded. And now I see it. Um, I didn't hear anything. So all right. <laughs> we're we're recording now. Um all right. So I, I attempted in the last uh, 10 minutes before this started to put together something of a demo. So this is not a well thought through demo, but that's usually how I do things with this group. <laughs> um, so I'm talking about GitHub Actions and I'll preface that like most things we demo, I'm not a pro at this at all. I, I use it for a couple of reasons and I'll, I mean, there's a lot of different use cases for it. Um, but I'll I'll demo a very simple idea, like what is the idea, what is actions, and then I'll demo how I use it for updating my website. Um, so I'll make like a simple little tiny Quarto website, uh, like the default one that you get, and I'll show you how you can use this to uh, continuously update your, your website every time you make a change to something. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen, and hopefully you all can see this. Um, so this was my first demo i made a little repo called actions demo and in a any repo you'll see a actions thing here and you'll get used to seeing this a lot you'll see lots of red before you get to green <laughs> when you work with actions it's like something error is all the time and then eventually finally it works and you just have to be uh resilient with it so i've already cloned this to my local computer here this is my actions demo folder and github actions start by making this hidden folder called dot github so you have to make those visible uh on a mac it's i think command shift period i don't know what it is on a windows so command shift period then you can see the hidden files so i have a git ignore file i have a dot git which is uh don't mess with that uh that's all of your things syncing your branches and whatnot um so i made this dot github and inside that one there's a workflows folder and then you have different yaml files i never make this from scratch i always like copy it over from another re repo and then work with it that's how i end up with this so i'll go to an existing one i'll copy over the whole dot github folder and go into my workflows and i'll have some sort of workflow um so what the workflow is doing is it's telling github like hey whenever uh, under some condition like i make a commit to my repo i change a file and push it here then i want you to run some code and every time I do that, I want you to run it. Or I can set it to be on a timer. Like every day at noon, I want you to run this script. And usually what that's for is things like, uh, let's say you are developing a package and you want to automatically test that package every time someone makes a change. And that way some flags will be thrown. Like, hey, you made a change that broke one of our tests. And then you'll see it automatically. And that's just sort of good practice um, for people to catch errors. Um, and like I said, I use it for rendering my website. So, so this is what the main, my main YAML looks like. And you can see it if you go into actions and you click on any of these workflows, um, you click on the main YAML and there it is. That's, that's the main thing. And it's, it's, it is just YAML, which is, uh, just variables with a colon and the values. Um, and so this is all templated stuff, you, there is certain names and keywords you have to use. So the name of the workflow, I just called it quick demo. The on <clears throat> field is telling you when do you want this to run. So in this time, it's it's just going to run every time I push something to the main branch, but you could have other branches as well. And what's it gonna do? Well, it's going to build, uh, and so really what, what we're handing in is a set of instructions. And you have to start as high level of thinking of what is the operating system you're even running on. So here it's going to run on Ubuntu, and it's going to do a few things. I'm going to I'm going to use actions, and I'm going to write a multi-line message. And here's the message. It's going to run this. It's going to say this is a demo file that shows a very basic, easy to run work workflow. And so all that does is print that out, so you can see on my actions like this just ran not long ago or yesterday. And you click on the build file and you'll see that here's each of those steps. It sets up the job, it checks out actions, and then here's where it wrote that message. See, there's is a file. So this is sort of like a hello world example. And um, and then it runs some post things and completes the job and you're done. So that's the idea. Um, not very useful in this case, but um, let's show another example. So I'm going to try to build this one in real time and walk you through like, my typical steps of setting one of these up. So I'm going to first, I'm, I'm going to make a little Quarto website. Um, I actually haven't even made it. I was I was literally trying to pull this together right before I started here. So 
I'll just copy from like one of my other websites or something. Um, let's let's go here and just copy like uh, this. Let's copy over uh, our studio file so I can um, do this here. I'll call this um, website or something, right? Um, open it up and I'm, I'm gonna use the typical template for a Cordo website. So let's say file, New pro new file, uh, Cordo presentation. There's usually Cordo website, um, Cordo document perhaps, or maybe it's a new project. I think it's a new project. Yes, uh, existing directory. Let's let's put it here. Uh, create a project. Uh, that did nothing. That's the same thing I'm already in. I was looking at this earlier to see what am I missing. Oh, I need to put it in a new directory. Then I can say Cordo website. Okay, let's do that. New project, uh, new new directory, Cordo website. And let's put it in my downloads folder. Sure, we'll call it uh, website. Yeah. You can do all these things at once. You can create a you know GitHub repo and all of that at that time. That was just me to get my basic website code running. So I threw that somewhere in my downloads folder. I'm going to just grab that code and bring it over. Here we go. This looks like some useful stuff. So let's let's get rid of these files and pull all this over. All right, now I've got a, a website here. Um, and so I'm, I'm not gonna go into detail on Cordo websites. They're static files, these QMD files, and you can render them into web pages. So this is one page, it's the index page. When you render it, it converts it into a web page and it looks like this. And so there's an about page and a home page. Great, this is a website, wonderful. Um, don't need to do much more with that. Um, <clears throat> so I have a website and my goal is I want to push this code to this re repository on, on GitHub and I want this, uh, so every time I make a change to this now, it's going to update my website. So before I get there, I'm going to, I'm going to first make these, these pushes, by the way, this is how I work with GitHub. Like I don't use command line. I don't use terminal. I always find it way too messy for most of what I need. Most of the time I'm pushing and pulling files. I use the desktop version. I find it much easier to see and understand what I'm doing. So I'm going to call it like website init or something and push that. And, and uh, now I've got, I, I should have my, uh, I got to go find my repository. Where is it? It should be on here. I should be able to see it. Here it is, demo website. <clears throat> okay. That's the, the files I just pushed. They're just sitting on here. They're not doing anything yet. There's no action happening. Um, when you click on actions, there's all sorts of default things. So you can build all kinds of things with, with actions. I'm, I'm just going to be doing the, the Cordo website as a, as a quick demo. Um, and this is how I would get started. Notice there's no .github folder. It's not there. Um, so I would just copy one over. Like I'll take this one, bring it over, paste it in here. And now I have something of a workflow that I can work with. Um, I should be able to see it in here too. I can edit it in our studio if I want. Um, this is the original one from that other re uh, uh, repo I just demoed. So I, I could push this. I can go ahead and, and say, create my main YAML. Sure, let's just call it that. And now I'll have an action that gets triggered um, now, probably. Um, or I think I have to, yeah. So now, now it's it's running and you see this little yellow dot means it's it's running. And uh, you can actually watch it in real time if if you want, but you'll see it here. When this turns green, it means it's it's correct. So we. I spend a lot of time staring at my repos going, please work <laughs> if I've got, I'm debugging or something. Uh, there, that worked. That was pretty fast. Um, and all it all it did was, you know, write that multi-line sentence. Great, it's working. Um, but that's not what I want this repo to do. I, I want this to actually render a Cordo website. So I need a lot more in my in my main, uh, I, need, I need more in here. So how do I set this up to run, build my website? Um, you could hack at this all day and, and fiddle with it. I have a tempo template that I'm going to pull from. So I'll just go again to my own website and grab that one. Uh, this is my personal website and I have a GitHub here. And this is the code for this one. Uh, so I'll pull this whole thing over and then we'll kind of like walk through it. There's a lot of things going on in this one. So there's two things. This one says render and deploy my Cordo website. Um, and it runs in two different times. So whenever I make a push to the main branch, it will run. And I also have it running daily at midnight. That I mean, just just because I, I want my website to always be up to date with anything I if I forgot to push, I don't know. Or there's there's other things on my website that's pulling things dynamically. So I always want it to re-render. 
Um, <clears throat> and so now the set of actions is a little more complicated. It's 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 running on Mac this time. Uh, it checks out a few things. So it checks out actions, but it also checks out um, R and Pandoc. Uh, those two are needed for using Cordo to, to render a Cordo uh, website. Um, <clears throat> and then there's a Cordo actions actually from Cordo itself. The developers of Cordo, they have their own set of actions here. So I'm just pulling all of these together. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm pulling in some dependencies. So I might have <clears throat> my, 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 my website might use some R packages. And if I, if it does that, that's what this is doing. It's, um, pulling in any package dependencies and installing them, uh, which is actually just using R code here to install those dependencies. So if this was like a different website, uh, let's say I'm trying to think of an example, uh, like something built in Python, you would probably have some packages you need to install as well. Um, once it's done, it publishes to my GitHub pages and renders it, and I'm sending it to this GH pages branch. So I'm not gonna push these changes because all these things are happening and we're gonna get some errors. Actually, I guess I could, it, wasn't, it doesn't really matter. We'll just get an error, so let's just push it. Um, so there's things that I need. Um, I need to tell it what dependencies I have. I haven't done that yet in my repo. I also don't even have a GitHub pages branch yet, so I'll, I'll do that. Um, um, so, First of all, when I when I render, uh, let's just go back to statically rendering a, a, a website. When I hit render, uh, what it's going to do is um, render my website into here, into this site folder. So this is the actual static files for my site. I could open these up in a browser, and you can see these two web pages here, about and and whatever. Uh, uh, so they're they're here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I don't want this to be inside my actual repository. I want these files that were created when the site got rendered. I want them to be on a separate GitHub branch. So I, I often do it this way. You, um, you could leave it like this. It's totally fine. Um, but uh, I prefer that this not be here, that when I render my site, it gets copied over to a, 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 a separate branch. So this is how I typically set up my, my websites is I have a main branch, but I'll, I'll just make a GitHub pages branch as well. I'll create this. Um, now I have two branches and I'll, I'll say, oh, let's, let's make my website actually serve from here. So let's go to pages. And this is, this is more a demo of how to make a, a website and deploy it on GitHub pages than it is actions, but you need some sort of demo to show why actions is useful. So let's let's deploy from branch. Okay, so it's deploying from my GitHub Pages branch. Okay, so that's this is what I want to happen. And now we're going to start tweaking things to make sure that this actually works. So the way this should work is when I when I push something in actions, I should be able to check. Uh, it, it should it should go through that sequence of of actions. It will render. Uh, there's an error, so it's not done. It's not working yet. Uh, and it will take all the files that are in this site folder and it'll push them over. It'll commit them to this branch for me. And then my root won't have this anymore. So I'll, I'll, I can do things like, uh, let's just delete that and add that to my git ignore. So I, I want to not have this anymore. So whatever it, it renders to a site, I don't want that to be committed anymore to uh, this repo. So let's say ignore site folder. And um, now that's gone. And even if I render it locally, this is just for locally previewing my website. I'll see, uh, I can preview it. Sure, that looks good. Um, this site folder is here, but nothing happens on my GitHub. Like it's not, it's ignoring that folder from now on. From now on, my, my goal is I, I make a push and uh, the action will trigger in, instead of creating the site folder, that'll disappear. It'll only temporarily create it and all the files inside that folder will, will get committed to here. Now this only will work once I get my action kind of like perfectly working. So it's, it's uh, almost there. The reason it's probably not working right now is because I don't have a, I haven't told my, this is more of a quarter website thing. I haven't told it, what are my dependencies? So let me just grab some random dependencies from like my personal <laughs> website here. Um, that's this description file. I'll just put that in here. Let's let's call it website, I don't know, demo and something like that. And let's just make it import, I don't know, a couple basic things. 
I don't actually need any of these things. Uh, I'm just going to give it give it some some things to import there. A couple dependencies, and we'll make our description. So we'll see if this fixes it. That that might be all we need to make it work. Um, so we'll we'll see in a minute here. Um, so here, this is still my main YAML. Let's go through and see if I, I feel like I have everything here. This All of these dependencies are coming from that description file. It should install them. Yes, should publish to GitHub and render it and stick it on my GitHub pages. So we'll see if, uh, if this goes. Um, and by the way, this whole script, you know, this set of steps to follow, I did not handwrite this. I mean, this is kind of messy and I, I wouldn't know necessarily offhand like what what things do I need to import and how do I import them? It's the word uses, it's not import. You know, there's special names here for, for setting up an action. I work between templates that are already given to me, which most developers provide. Like if you're working within some sort of ecosystem, in this case, I'm working within Cordo, um, there's plenty of templates that you can just grab and say, this is how you, you know, set up a Cordo website. Um, so you can work with that. You can also work with Claude or ChatGPT or any of those tools. I mean, this is one thing that I have found them to be exceptionally good at is debugging my, my action YAML. When I see my action, I run it, I see an error, I go over to Claude and I say, hey, like this is my action file. Uh, here's the error I got, where is it wrong? And it'll be like, oh, you forgot to you know check out R and then it'll, it'll just rewrite it for me. <laughs> A few iterations of that and, and we have it working, especially this kind of thing. You know, how do I set up a cron job? Well, each of these mean different things. It's like days and seconds and time and, and, and weeks and months. And I don't remember any of them. I never remember. I just say, I want this to run every Sunday afternoon at, at noon. And it'll say, here you go. All right. So the the AI tools are fantastic for this kind of task. Um, now, this is still going. I'm Like I said, early on, you're going to see lots of red before you see green. Um, usually there's errors that will pop up along the way, and then you have to start debugging to get there. Um, uh, in this particular case, my only other concern is uh, it might not have permissions. I'm going to check in my settings. This is another common thing um, where you might have to set actions. Um, you might have to give it <clears throat> permission to actually write to things. So allow all actions and reusable workflows. I think that's okay. Um, yeah, uh, read and write permissions. So this is this is going to cause this might cause. I don't know if it's causing a current error, but you probably need to do this. Um, meaning, in in my case, how I'm using it, I'm I'm having it write those files to a new branch, to the the GitHub Pages branch. So I need it to have write permissions. So it's going to um, error until I change that. So that will. That will be another setting that's sometimes helpful or needed. Um, so I've got an error. Let's see what it is. I can check the build here, and somewhere here it'll tell me what's going on. Um, our markdown package is not available. So this has nothing to do with actions. It's telling me that one of the dependencies I've added, it it can't find. And in, in fact, I don't even need any of these. So let's just get rid of, let's just keep one. I'm just keeping one to see as a demo in case anybody sees this video and wants to you know, set up their own website with dependencies. Um, let's try that. Uh, I'm just going to push these quickly. And then we'll see another action trigger because I just pushed it, right? So there you go. It's 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 hitting another run and, and now it's going at it. And you can watch this live. And if you're, if you're really bored or you're masochistic and you want to watch your thing slowly fail over time, you can sit here and um, watch it install all your things. But... Um, Half the time I just hit run and I go off and work on something else while I'm waiting for it to, to go. Um, eventually this should show up on, uh, I believe it's, oh, what's going to, what's going to be the site? It's going to be jhelvy.github.io and then that's the repo name. So it should be here. So right now it's only showing my readme page because the, it's not deploying um, the website files yet. They're not, they're not there in the, um, they haven't gotten here. The GitHub Pages branch has nothing, but the it actually has a copy of the original code. So I need to eliminate all of that. Let me do that real quick. And by the way, I, I'm just rambling on here. I'm going through a workflow I know relatively well. So if if you want to stop me at any point and go, what what did you just do and why? Um, let me know. I I made that GitHub Pages branch 
nine minutes ago. That was just a copy of the other one. So I actually don't want any of this. I don't want anything in here except for maybe my git ignore. So I'm going to just delete all of that. So now when things write to my pages, it's only going to be the static files that got written there. So I'm just going to say, you know, delete old files. And now that one's clean. That's an empty branch, more or less. You can go back to main. There. So this is how I set it up. Again, not everybody does it this way for building a site. You could have it where you have a site folder in your root. I just like keeping these things separate. I think it's kind of cleaner. Um, and uh, we'll see if this ever actually runs. One of these days, it'll start working. Where are we at? Um, looking promising. We'll see. Um, I just keep hitting refresh. So that's most of it, like in, I don't know, 15 minutes here of using actions. It's um, eventually it'll work here, but you can see what we're what we're doing. You can imagine if you're building a um, any kind of package and you want it to run a series of tests before uh, it or or uh, on every every commit you make or something, you could easily just modify this this um, workflow file to run other things here. Um, and so you you're it's it's kind of a weird language here, this YAML, you know, but it's just a set of instructions. And like I said, most of these instructions, you have to kind of stare at them for a little bit to read the details of what's actually going on here. Um, but most of the time I'm using a template that someone else provided or an AI tool provided, and I'm just editing it to my use case. Um, and there's other benefits of this, like um, I, I guess there's now pre-actions and things that we can talk about. I, I don't ever use them. I've never used them, so I don't really know much about them, but it's evolved over time. Um, uh, but I, I guess I, I use it for website building and package uh, testing. So okay, there you go. This this is saying it it ran. I should be able to see on my GitHub pages now. Oh, I don't see I don't see anything yet. It looks like there's no files that were updated yet. Um, and this is still going to be just that. Yeah, it's not found. There's nothing there still. So um, maybe I missed something. Oh, here's my deploy. So it, or maybe it just takes a minute. It might just take a little while, um, but I don't I don't see my uh, my files that would have been in my site folder. They're not here. If they're not here, that means I I must have something slightly off in my action. Um, let me check how I set up my other website. Um, possibly, it's in this. No, my output beer is called site, so that's the same as in here. This is the YAML for my, um, oh, I don't have it specified. Um, I think I have to have that specified for, for it to know, where did I have this, end of project? Yeah, let's put it into project. That it's it's going to output to this site folder. And um, I don't think I need that, but let's just push it again to see if that makes the difference. Um, or there could be a permissions issue still happening where like this got rendered, but it didn't it didn't actually push it to my GitHub pages branch for some reason. Um, so we'll wait for this one to build again. But it's it's I mean it's I guess kind of the, the important part here is that it builds from the scratch up. Like it it kind of says, I'm running on Mac and then I'm gonna install all the things you want me to install. So it's very explicit about um what the configuration of your setting is. And it's it's really helpful for like even debugging things sometimes. If you have like mismatched packages where on my computer I have this version and on that machine I have that version and I can't figure out why, I can just set up an action and be like, I want you to install exactly these versions and then run this code and see if there's an error. And I've done I've had a situation where I've done it, I've used it in that way where I'm not even using it to deploy anything. I'm just using it to actually just compute in a very uh, for free on, by the way, I'm, I mean, I'm not, this is their computer computing power that they're spending. Uh, and I can check, uh, if, if something is just happens to be wrong on my machine, you know, if it runs on actions and it doesn't run on mine, there must be something wrong. You know, something's missing here. Um, so, uh, I'm going to keep, <laughs> keep debugging my, my action until I get this website running, but, 
I mean, any any other time here, we can we can talk about it or ask questions or you know, I'm I'm otherwise kind of done with my demo here. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Do people have questions here or people online? David has a question. Um, I don't know if you can answer this, but um, do you know what the model for uh, GitHub is? Um, I mean, they're owned by Microsoft. Why are they giving all this for free? Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I think I think now it's like, well, we have access to all your code and we're going to steal it and train our models on it. But <laughs> that's, that's what they're doing now with it, for sure. Uh, um, uh, but I don't know what it was before large language models and, and um, I, I don't really know what, uh, what, I mean, I don't see ads on here. Right. I, I think they, they do have enterprise services that you can pay for. Right. So maybe, maybe that's where all the revenue is coming from is not people like me just using their compute power for, for pennies. And they don't, they can just basically my my load on their system is like rounding errors compared to maybe enterprise level things. So I don't I don't really know um, how they make money, but they are immensely useful service for development. It's it's pretty much the service I think for uh, most developers developing anything, websites or packages or anything else. Okay, great. I'm just, I guess the. I don't really care about how they make money. I'm more worried, are they going to shut it off at some point? Oh, yeah. Um, you mean actions are like all of GitHub? Mm, you know, piece by piece, actions and GitHub pages and different things. Uh, I mean, historically, they haven't had any signaling that they're going to do things in very like harsh ways like usually if features are being depreciated they're pretty good about announcing it and telling you way ahead of time and but i feel like it's kind of similar to like like let's say gmail or something like would google ever just shut down gmail one day i i don't know if they did like uh it's used by humongous contracts with giant companies using them like gw even our email system going through gmail so feel kind of doubtful that something that harsh would happen. Um, there'd have to be a pretty darn good reason. And there's even been like, I mean, it's it's a constant target for hacking. Um, and so they have some pretty serious security that they have to deal with. Um, and even on like sort of nation state scale hacking, um, nation states not liking what somebody posted on a GitHub repo, for example, and then trying to take that down. Um, so, I'd say as far as like web development goes, they're kind of up there with the Googles. I mean, it's Microsoft now. So um, I don't know why this is still happening. I, I don't even have this in here anymore. <laughs> but maybe I should demo this. Like, this is a good example. I'm like, I've got this error. It's saying load space, there is no package on a markdown. Uh, oh, that's happening inside this index file. So it's... It's actually, it's it's it needs our markdown. So I I probably need to actually put our markdown back in for this to run, and I can see if that 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 package might be needed. Let's say at our markdown, but I could also run this through Claude. I mean, I could tell it, um, you know, this is the this is the error I got. Um, you know, this is exactly what I would do. I'm building a Cordo website and rendering it on GitHub Actions. This is the error. I don't even care if I typed it wrong. It'll it'll figure it out. Our markdown package is not installed in the environment. Yeah. So it's going to actually suggest that I do that. Now it's it's telling me to just do it directly. It's like you can just install the dependency here since you only have these two. Um, I've set mine up <clears throat> slightly differently where I have this description file that allows me to kind of specify my packages, but I could also try just, you know, copying this whole thing, this whole action. And what's interesting though, is I didn't even give it my action file, right? I just told it the error and it already suggested that I'm trying to render, render a website. So it said, why don't you try this instead? Um, 
this is a different action, uh, but you'll see that it's also not doing anything like pushing it to get up pages or anything like that, which is what I had have on mine. And, and I could modify this and tell it, you know, well, this is, you know, this is how I'm currently doing it. Can you, can you add that into my current YAML and see if it like, sure, there you go. <laughs> and now it's going to adapt to my current settings where I'm installing dependencies in a different way. Um, but it's, it's now just specifying those two. So this is a little bit redundant anyway. Um, but it's keeping the GitHub pages thing that I have set up and explains it. So pretty, pretty great. I mean, this is exactly what these things are for. I think, I mean, this is, this is how I use AI tools constantly. Um, that, that looks good. Um, now we're, we're running again, so we'll keep debugging, but eventually it'll turn green and we'll have fixed all the problems. Um, and it takes a long time. Uh, I guess I, I could show you yet a, a different one. Let's go over here and actually just look at my actual website, like how I have it set up. Um, this is with a working site where things are deploying properly. It should look something like this, where this is my source code for my file, for my website. So each of these QMDs are, are just different web pages on my website. And when it renders, you, I, there's no site file here. There's no site folder. It gets pushed to my GitHub Pages branch. And so the GitHub Pages is actually the, this is all of the rendered content that, that would be in my site folder um, if I rendered it locally on my computer. So uh, kind of a fun trick that I've learned in working this way um, is in any HTML file, like you can click on it and you can say, view the raw file. And that's the raw file, obviously. But in, instead of GitHub user content, you can say git hack. Has you, anybody seen this before? Raw.git hack. And it actually serves your file. So this is like actually my website. And you can you can look through my I'm I'm basically previewing what's on my site, but it's going to raw.githack.com. So it's 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 just serving the raw HTML file directly. Um, so this is a way to preview things if you can't get it working. So it's it, it is a hack. Um, but uh, I do this often if I'm like I swear I changed that HTML and it looks it looks right to me. Let's let's just quickly view it and I can just view it that way and it and it renders it. I'm not actually sure how it's doing that, but um, so this is the, this is the setup, and you'll see here it says built site for GitHub Pages. This was a robot, you know, pushing all of these commits, and um, only on my main branch do you see the things coming from me, the, the changes I've made. Um, so, oh, that says it's it's done now. I don't know if it's actually done. Oh, there it is. Okay, we we finally got it. So. It was just some package dependency. So now this is nice. Now I can actually demo what it looks like to make a change. Um, so my site, the source files are here. The rendered pages are here, and they're being served through GitHub pages at this URL. OK? So now if I want to make a change, let's let's make a change, because this is just like, I don't know, some code. Who needs who needs code? This is just my personal website. Let's let's just, Let's say this is my personal website or something like that. Uh, well, let's delete that, render it, and I can preview it. I don't have to render it, but I'm just previewing it. It should look like this. I should see a change happen here. And then I can update the repo and say, um, update index page. And now when I make a push, I don't think about it anymore. I'm, I'm done. And my website will just automatically update at some point in the future. I have to wait for all the actions to run, you know, but that action's running. It's going to rebuild my entire site from the ground up, push it to my GitHub pages, and serve it um, here. So eventually, this will will show that I just keep hitting refresh, and eventually, this when this action is done, it's done. So this is what it feels like when you have this infrastructure kind of set up. Editing your website is very nice. You you kind of preview it locally, and you can edit things on the fly, and then you just commit those changes, and off they are. And now they're going to be live, and you don't have to worry about it. It should just work. Um, it just takes you a minute to kind of get the action working. And a particular nice feature I like about Cordo sites is there's a feature called Cordo Preview. Oh, it's already being used, it said. Yeah, so Cordo Preview means now it's serving live and I can kind of like make a change and hit save and now it automatically changes. So I can I can be pretty dynamic in my editing. You know, more changes, <laughs> yay. And it 
pops up. So it's constantly rendering the actual pages. So building a, building a site is very easy. You, you want to add a new page or something, I just make a copy and drop it over. So let's make another page. Let's call this page teaching or something. Maybe I'm making a teaching page. Then I, I have to, I can, uh, I can add it, I can edit it. Uh, teaching, this is my teaching page. And then in my YAML, I can just say, let's add that to my menu. So teaching.qmd. Now this will show up on my site. There it is, teaching about teaching. And again, I can just go over and say, you know, added my teaching page. And I just keep pushing commits and eventually it will all show up on the real website. Let's see if this one's done yet. No, it's still it's still running. So it is not necessarily fast. It takes a while. And if you have a lot more content on your website, like dependencies and things, it'll it'll take a while, but eventually it'll just update. So you you get this live updating and you can go really crazy with this. I mean, you can put tests in there, you can you can put things in there to make sure they break or they throw a flag if if something broke that you didn't want. But my typical environment feels like this. I'm hosting it locally to edit site, make changes, push the changes, and then just forget about it. Um, so same thing for developing a, a package. You know, we, we push our changes to about the package and then we just don't think about it because if there's a if it broke a test, I'll know pretty soon. Actions will 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 email me. And actually every one of these errors, at least my current settings, when I get an, an error that it doesn't run like a red one, I get an email from GitHub that says, hey, this this action failed. And so um, I'll have to go back and figure out what's going on. Um, something broke. OK, so that's question in the chat. Oh, there's a question here. I didn't see this. Do you have any best sources to read about Git actions? Um, Claude? <laughs> <laughs> Like I don't, I, I've never really read much documentation on it. I have, I have approached it with a very uh, specific use case in mind always. Like I want to use it for X. How do I do that? And usually, there's either a template available. Like I'm building this package in Python. How do I make my package get tested automatically according to this battery of tests? Uh, I'll Google for that, and usually you'll find some good demonstrations or some examples. Or I'll just tell Claude that's exactly what I'm trying to do. And it'll come up with a YAML file for me. And I'll just iterate as I get error messages and go back and forth to figure out what am I missing or, or did I forget to install anything? Um, yeah. Um, yep, we have a question so here. Aside from um, the Git action, like how do you compare Claude to ChatGPT? Oh. I like it more for coding now. I, I mean, at least in my experience in the last month or so, uh, maybe two months, it, it just seems to do better with the types of programming tasks that we've used it for. Um, I also program a lot more in R. It seems to know R better. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I've had issues in the past where like ChatGPT thinks, unless I'm really explicit about what I want it to do, it, it starts writing Python code. Um, I feel like it's just what they were trained on maybe or, but I haven't used the latest version either. I mean, there's this new model from ChatGPT that is, uh, what's the one? Um, zero one. Zero one, yeah. That's supposedly very good for programming and solving programming problems. So I, ha I haven't used it yet, but I, I have to say that the Claude experience is quite nice um, for especially projects. I like this idea of projects. I haven't really tried this much outside of uh, the project we're working on, the survey down project, but you can give it a lot of context. So you can say, here's the files I'm working with. And now it sort of has that knowledge base and you can add a lot. Um, and so as you're asking it to do things, it's going to, it's going to answer those questions within the context of your project. So we have a package we're making and we'll say, this is the latest version of the, the files in my package. Uh, how do I do this, this one thing? And so the interaction is quite nice. You ask a question, it gives you a response, but then you'll also get these artifacts off on the side. So it kind of separates code from the context around the code and explains your code. 
I, I just find like this to be a really nice interface. Uh, here's the file that you want to use um, and you can download it or copy it or whatever. Usually I'm just copying pieces of it to update what I'm working on, but it, it just, it just feels quite nice. Uh, I, I've had a better experience with it. Are you still using cursor? Yep. Uh, that's actually usually what I use to edit my websites. Um, and, and that's linked to your cloud then, or is it, it runs its own? Yes, app. it is. Well, yeah, I have it linked to my cloud subscription, but like you could kind of see, you know, building a website. This was another one I was working on. Let's just open the demo. I was working on this now, um, workshops, this thing. So here is my, uh, pages I was making, you know, the, the teaching page or the about me page or whatever. And I can just open up a terminal and say, just like I did on in our studio, Cordo preview, and it, it will, it'll host my website. So here's my local website. But now as I make changes, it, it'll make suggestions to me. Um, and I can edit things. Now I'm just writing text, so it doesn't have a lot of suggestions. <laughs> um, but I, there's, I think there's two different things that are nice. I mean, if you have some kind of bug, you can do a quick check. Like, let's uh, say I have I, a question. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So, professor. Yeah. So, yeah, we've been using we've been using cursor, and yeah. it's really great. But, uh, cursor has like one disadvantage that I noticed. Like for our studio, we can open multiple our studio projects. Yes. So that, for example, I can open our, uh, our, our the uh, survey down package about package development, and also I can open a demo survey so that I can open two or three or four or more of it, more of it, multiple of it. But for cursor, I can only open one project. Like, do you have any hacky way to to solve it to get over yeah. it? Yeah, I haven't actually even tried to do it. Uh, probably just because I saw that you couldn't and I was like, okay, whatever. And I just, <laughs> just move forward without it. But that yeah. is uh, maybe a limitation here. Um, I was trying to demo here a little bit of like the, the experience though of using it. I like, this is kind of what it looks like. You'll see these suggested lines pop up and you just hit tab if you want to keep that. Now, this thing doesn't have a lot to work on. So it's just, it's grasping at straws here. It's like, this is a, this site was built with blog down. Actually, it's not, but I could, I could modify this. Let's see if it figures it out. Corto. Or, yeah, it got it. So now you can see over here that it's 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 already figured out that's probably what I'm going about to type. So then you just hit tab and it's done. And now I hit save and now I can see that here. And yep, it's working. So um, it's quite nice. Like it, it's almost strange. It's like you have someone looking over your shoulder as you're typing and they're like, I think I know what you want to say. <laughs> and it just starts filling it in for you. Um, but I, I, I'll, I'll use it a lot. Um, and even even in doing something like writing a blog post, you know, it's um, it's sometimes I it 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 can read ahead of what I'm thinking of where I'm going. Maybe I can say this like you know this let's let's do this. This is how I built this site, and if I change this to a colon, it'll it'll start making steps. See, it's it's already figuring out. I'm probably going to make some steps, right? So, uh, install Cordo, and then I could. You know, it it starts to kind of think ahead, and I just hit save, and you can see it pop up here. Um, now, this is this is not correct at all. You don't have to do all that nonsense. You don't even need R for Cordo. Um, but um, Cordo is four different languages. It doesn't have to be R. It could be any. You don't even have to. There's no R code in this site actually at all, right now. It's just text. Um, but I could ask it for things. I could I could say you know like link to install Cordo. And, and see if it, you know, figures it out. Uh, yeah, there it is. So accept. Visit Cordo installation page. Uh, I don't know if that's the right page, but it might be. Uh, I can hit save and check it. Uh, yep, that worked. So it's it's kind of smart. And uh, I I find it to be really nice for a lot of different things, even even writing proposals. I write proposals in, 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 in Cursor now. So this demo has evolved. It's gone from GitHub Actions to Quarter Websites and now to Cursor. But um, I'm I'm using all of these tools. I feel like you you should be experimenting with them at least. They're they're quite nice. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I'll stop the recording. All right.